Washington and Venice wearing the road black uniforms with orange and blue trim. Well, I say good luck on these numbers too, partner. Washington Venice controls it, and here is Freddie Liriano. Again, just five foot eight, but he is a very dynamic point guard, very quick with the handles. Here is Sewell on the right side to match by Coward. Jumps at the foul line, right side jumper from McAdoo. Not there. Chris Coffey has the rebound. He averages 11 per game. He'll be among the nation's leaders all year long. Just because he's active. Coward on the right side. Going to give it back to Omer, who's matched up with Liriano. That should be a fun matchup to watch. Two very quick guards. Lob coming. 12 seconds to shoot. Georgetown still looking for something offensively. Right side here is Omer, under 10. Omer with the left hand, still working on Liriano. Now down to Boomba on the block. Hook shot from eight is no good. And the rebound pulled away by Liriano. He averages five boards per game, even though he's just five foot eight. Very tough. Tell you what, good defensive series for Washington and Venice in the man-to-man. We've seen them play 2-3 zone when they've come in here to this building before. Good bounce feed down low. Nice and move. good finish by Tyreek McAdoo off the nice pass from Sewell. And Washington and Venice on the board first. Little baseline series out of a flex offense there. Got him that shot. Coward with the left hand. He's cut off by Liriano. Back out to Conway. Now Omer. Ooh, Omer nice crossover. Crossover. Stepping into it way off the mark. And Chris Briggs doesn't like that shot at all. This is Liriano once again. Around a screen. He'll take a three. That nearly banked home. That's just his second three-point attempt of the season. The shock eventually control the deflection. It comes out to McAdoo and Liriano will reset the offense. Georgetown it got it cut out of position trying to block out, out of the man-to-man. This is unquestionably the best team Georgetown has played thus far through four games as that ball is oh, lost wow. out of bounds. They're going to say Boomba touched it. I didn't see that. I didn't either. That was Raymond on the dribble. Yeah, I, I didn't think he did either, but both officials on that side of the floor agree. It will be shock basketball with six to shoot. Raymond has it beyond the three-point line to the corner. Shot clock down to two. I don't know that they realize it, and they don't. They're going to get it up. It's an air ball, so it was a shot clock violation either way. Well, I don't like that call, though. Coffey got the rebound out of midair and was out on the dribble, and you have to stop it and inbound it. Yeah, that's a rule at all levels I'd like to see changed. Yeah, it needs to. Here is Omer. Georgetown still looking for its first points. Just over two minutes into this matchup, Coward. Bump from behind by Lariano, and Freddie Lariano picks up the first foul of the ball game. And he looks at his bench, says, Coach, and his coach says, Why? You got caught in a bad position. Why reach? Because yeah, he's like important Coward, to their ball club. Like Coward almost had him posted up there on the right wing. Yeah. But playing LJ Coward a little, little off the ball right now to start this game tonight. Coward on the right side looking for coffee. Good bounce feed. Bullet pass, I should say, not the bounce feed down low. Coffee. Too awkward of a shot. Well defended by McAdoo, and the shot cleared away. Should have used his left hand on the jump hook coming across the middle. This is Sewell to the foul line. Raymond doesn't want it. And around the screen now is Elijah Maynard. Down low, and a blocking foul called on Omer. Said he was in the circle there with his right foot. They got LJ guarding Sewell on the defensive end right now, and that's just basically a physical need because LJ is such a physical guard at six foot. Raymond at the line, just one for three on the season. Good that looking pretty form. good, yeah, for a 33% foul shooter. Yeah, good looking form there. Makes it three to nothing in favor of Washington and Venice. Decent crowd in here for a Saturday night with a yep. yeah, nice big old cr- football game up the road. Huh? Nice crowd has settled <laughs> really in here, nice Davis Reed Alumni Gym. Four to nothing. Georgetown shut out through the first 245 of this game. Liriano aggressive defensively, forces Coward to give it up to Conway. Now to Omer. Good shot fake. Euro nice. step down low. Pass too hot to handle yep. for Boomba. Georgetown turns it over. Boomba's got to be ready with his hands, though. Here is Sewell. He was the hero a year ago in the upset. Nice pick. Stolen away by Omer. Two on one. He has coffee on his right. Here comes the lob. Here comes the flush. <laughs> Georgetown's averaging 14 steals per game thus far in the season. And Chris Coffey drops the hammer to get Georgetown on the board. He can fly with the best of them. Doesn't matter what level. 
Sewell around the screen to the right side. Maynard, he doesn't want it. Now Liriano defended by Conway with 10 to shoot. Liriano gets it back out. Maynard wants a three. He's got a three. Over Coffee. Coffee a little late on the closeout. Just his third three of the season on 12 tries. It's 7 to 2 in favor of Washington and Venice. Again, we told you at the top of the broadcast, they're a Division II NAIA team, but they can play with anybody in the country. Omer through the lane. May got away with a walk. Floater is good. I think Liriano got away with a second foul, too. He grabbed Omer as he went into the lane. That was a, that, from my vantage point, that looked like a carry for about seven yards for Jake Omer. Well, I'll agree with that, but I thought Liriano got by with one, too, so. Sewell. No harm, no foul, right? Over that way to McAdoo. Nice play. Pass too hot to handle. And Chris Coffey wants to run. He's still trying to tell me he's a guard. Oh. And my goodness. Oh. I let oh. him have that one. Oh. And that brought the bench up. Every single one of them. Onto the floor, too. And Chris, that's the fastest I've seen Barrett Meyer moving in a long time. And this Davis Reed alumni, Jim Crowd, is into this. As Chris Coffey has brought the hammer down twice. He went coast to coast with that one, so maybe he is a little bit of a guard, huh? Sewell. Good feed over to Liriano. Bobbled it down to five. Into the far corner. Good look. Maynard, another three. That shut the crowd up a little bit there. Great pass from Freddie Liriano over to Elijah Maynard. Maynard has six. Well, if you're Georgetown, you got to go at Liriano. He already has a one foul early. See if he can pick up that second one on him. Coffee with the handoff to Omer. Back door there and a bad pass from Omer as Coffee was rolling Coffee to the rim. Looking. Georgetown will send Kyron Jones into the game for Boomba. And for Washington Venice, Dwayne Garner checks in for the first time. Gilkerson with the ball as we come into the front court. Now see how their offense runs with a newer point guard in. Gilkerson with it now. Averages just 12 minutes a night. Here is Hopkins. Now Maynard checked by Conway. Maynard has six. Gilkerson oh. pass out. Hopkins three is no good. Coffee has the rebound amongst the trees and gets it back to Conway. Between three shock players, too. Coward gets it over to Omer. Didn't catch it clean. Otherwise, that ball was going up. 14-20 to play in the first half. Omer now lets it fly. Rolls off. Good rebound by Maynard. Maynard Going Richard Hamilton with the face mask is on the other side. Garner lost his footing, but now sets a screen for Gilkerson. Sewell, three ball. Off the front iron. Coffee tipped it right to Hopkins. Maynard wants a third three. This time short. Kyron Jones with the board for Georgetown. Six minutes into this one. Good back and forth action. Venice with the lead. Coward a bit Bad out of shot. control. Good pass back. Coffee through the lane. Fouled. He will shoot two. Boy, breakneck pace. We told you at the top of the broadcast again, Adventist is not afraid to run. No, they're not. Hopkins picks up the foul. His but first. right now they've fallen in love with the three. And I don't think they can, can win this game continually shooting from behind the arc. And I will say this, Sewell finally got a look. That was his first shot of the ball game. And Chris LJ, LJ could probably tell us what Adventist had for their pregame meal. Nico Clareth checks into the game, coming off the bench here today in place of Omer. So Coffee hits the free throw, so 10-7, your score. Coffee, 9 of 11 now from the year on, from the foul line. I was just about to say that. And of course, he, bri him. he bricks the second. Of course, it was you this time. How about Kyron Jones? He's going to line for getting the offensive rebound. And this is the issue at Venice is probably going to have all season long. They do not have the size down low. As Hopkins picks up two fouls in a row, and it's the team's third. Hopkins will have to come out. Well, if you are going to be undersized, then you better stick a body on somebody. Kyron Jones, free throw rattles in for the redshirt freshman out of Bowling Green. He was out really early today getting shots up. He's made five field goals in each of his last two games. Free throw here, no good, so he's two for four on the year at the line. Clareth gets an offensive rebound, shuffles out. Conway, wide open three, not there. Coward gets the offensive rebound. Now Jones in the corner, wanting to drive to the baseline. He'll go up and he'll lay it in. That play made by Jones, though, or actually LJ Cowherd, keeping the ball alive. Tied at 10, 13-20 to play in the first half. After a good start for the shock, Georgetown has answered. Garner will let a three fly. It's no good. Conway had it deflected by Sewell. And now Gilkerson over to Sewell. Wide open. 
drains it. Yeah, can't let him shoot. And Sewell turns around immediately and That's to the ba- baseball team down here to our right and puts his member, A.W. Hamilton, last night said, hey, we're going to run. <laughs> Play their style. Yeah, got him it's beat by 42 last so night. So far, the Shocker doing that just that, and they have a three-point lead over the number one team in the country. Conway off the curl, bounce speed down low. Too and many passes. Good job by Maynard to knock it away, and Adventist off and running. Gilkerson trying to go down the lane, kicks it out. Maynard wants another three. He has another three. It's his third three of the half. And he had three coming in. Clareth wants to answer. That's off the mark. And rebound pulled down by Garner. Boy, Georgetown right now needs to get into the lane a little bit. Nice Gilkerson play. knocked away. Coward comes away with it for Georgetown. Skips it to the corner. Conway wide open, way off the mark. Clareth gets the rebound. Bounce feet to Co- Coward. He may have been bumped all the way and still a battle Bodies for everywhere. The shock eventually come away with it. Georgetown maybe playing a little too fast offensively right now. Well, I thought LJ got hammered as he went to the, to the lane. Gilkerson now down low to Garner. Garner backs his way in over his head. A circus shot almost went down. Coffee heads the board. Eight minutes in. Coward, nice feed to Kyron Jones. He's going back to the line as Gilkerson got him. He was down there, and now they're going to credit to Garner. Both were in the area. That's Garner's first, team's fourth. Timeout on the floor. Kyron Jones, good early minutes for the redshirt freshman. He has three points, and will head to the line after this brief timeout. 11.53 to play. In the first half, Washington at Venice with eight for two on his first foray there. Makes him two for four on the season. A good physical presence. He gives the Tigers down low. That free throw way too strong. I think he's going to be a guy that's going to get those gritty, tough rebounds all year long. Yeah, he's going to fill a role that had been filled by Chris, by excuse me, by Jacob Conway the last few years. Now Conway more of a it looks like he's still going to get those rebounds. For, you know, periodically, but commonly more to the floating to the perimeter now. One thing we've not seen thus far yet is Georgetown try and put a little press action on Adventist. Drive down the lane. Oh, wow. A foul going to be called. The crowd They're doesn't like it. As coffee. I agree. That's Raymond was driving on coffee. It looked like Raymond may have just got himself out of control. I, I, the, you know, everybody in the crowd said the same thing. Coffee had his hand straight up. And that's where the offensive guy gets the benefit of the doubt 90% of the time on that principle of verticality, he jumped into Chris to create the, co- the the contact. Free throw from Raymond, no good. And that's why I think that rule, if you're not going to call the principle of verticality, just throw it out. <clears throat> because nine times out of ten when it's called, the, co- the, the offensive guy gets the benefit of the doubt. The second for the New Jersey native is good. So Raymond now with three. Your score 17 to 11. 1 from the shock this time. They're going to back out of it. It was just token pressure to get a little bit of the shot clock off. Coward. Shot clock already down to 15. Georgetown much more deliberate this time. Coward on the drive, lays it in. LJ Coward's first assist. Makes him 12 shy of 1,000 for his career. 17-13 at Venice Leeds. 11 minutes to play in the first half. Gilkerson evaluating against Nico Clareth. Lost it on the way up. And they'll say Clareth knocked it away. Chris Briggs doesn't agree. But the shock will keep it with 14 to shoot. Well, the underneath official was the one that made the call. Chris pleading to the one here on the near side. He said, I didn't see it. I thought he had the best, better view of it. Sewell going to post up on Coward. He'll have a height and strength advantage. Tough floater. Got it to go. Yeah, he didn't look like he really shot that. It looked like he kind of threw it up, though. It didn't really yep. shoot it. Sewell went out with five. Back to a six-point shock lead. Clareth. Force three. Not, a good, not a good shot. Shoot. Georgetown's stagnant right now offensively. No ball movement. No player movement. Sewell gets a screen. Pulls up from the elbow. That one too strong. Clareth with the rebound for the Tigers. Coward to the right side to Jones and now gets it back. Needs to penetrate. With the left hand, he'll oblige. Good extra pass to Omer, wide open. How many times did we see Noah Cottrell drill it from that spot? Oh, yeah. Omer's 7-3 of the season on 12 tries. And Omer has the kind of range that Cottrell had. 
Gilkerson gets a screen. Now we'll take the 18-footer and hit it. Good form from Shaheem Gilkerson. Just his second made field goal of the season. And Adventist still keeping Georgetown at Arms Bay, leading by five. Crossover on oh, wow. a beauty. Good look over to Kyron Jones for the slam. Beautiful read by LJ Coward for the assist. And Jones with er- six early. Well, and that was a nice crossover to leave the defender hanging. Gilkerson working on Clareth with the left hand. Gil- Nico Clareth with the rejection. Omer up ahead. Bumped. No good, but he will go to the line. I'll tell you what. They are so quick in defense to offense transition. Clareth comes in leading the Tigers in block shots at 2.7 a game. And I think that puts him in the top 10 in the country. He came in today with seven blocks. And he got that one with the left hand, too. Omer, free throw line is good. He's now seven for eight on the season. Liriano comes back in for the shock. Got a real good rest, about a five-minute rest for Liriano. Garner checks in. Also, Jay Davis in for the first time wearing number five. He's on the right side of the line, closest to Jake Omer. Boy, isn't it amazing how when the University of Arkansas came out with him in, in, in Michigan with those baggy pants, now you got the guys going back shorter, the other way. So, so now they're folding up the, the waistbands. That's right, got to go back the other way. One-point game. 21-20 with 9.20 to play in the first half. The high socks will be next. <laughs> I'm all for that. Because I believe all baseball players should have to wear the stirrups. I agree. Jay Davis gets carry at the top. Oh, no, and moving screen. They're going to call it moving screen. I thought it was a carry. I did, but too. Nevertheless, foul's going to get called on Murphy. That's his second. That is his second. I didn't think it was a moving screen. I thought it was more of a carry there like you did, partner. So Murphy will have to come out now with the two fouls. Georgetown looking for the lead. That's a sixth foul, too. So the next foul, yep. Georgetown will shoot the bonus. Okay. Oh, given it. Good Should've defense. Given it Great defense by Liriano to deny the turn. And Clarence not looking quite sharp tonight. Yeah. Taking a couple of bad shots from the outside and f- forced into a turnover by the – Small Freddie Liriano. Well, he should have given it on the handoff to, to LJ and now gone back door. McAdoo, who had the opening basket, now gives it over to Garner. Georgetown has not led in this game. Ooh. Crossover. Beautiful from Freddie Liriano. LJ just had done to him what he does to about every other guard in that the country. Is, that is pretty. Liriano's first bucket. Coward into the lane to Jones, back out to Coffee. Now Omer, good shot fake. Omer down the lane, Euro step, and gets called for the walk. Now that one time that I told you, they've been a Euro step call. It'll be one time in a game. We'll see. Sometime they'll call the Euro step with a walk, and they just called it tonight. So that's the one time, partner, 1920, that we'll have called the Euro step as a walk. Coffee knocked the ball out, so Adventist keeps it in the corner. That's a tough place to inbound, too, in that deep corner, but they got it in pretty well. Lariano resets the offense at the top. Now Garner with it, under 15 to shoot. He'll take the elbow jumper. Coffee let him have it, rolls up the front iron. Jones with the rebound, and that ball poked away by Maynard into the Georgetown bench. Quick hands over there from somebody on the Georgetown bench or a teammate would have taken it right in the nose. But Venice it still continues to impress me. with The way they play here when they come to Davis Reed Alumni Gym, you just get that feeling like they believe they belong on a floor like this with Georgetown. Well, they, they're, they're coming from Maryland, which is a pretty good hotbed for basketball in general. Omer, deep three. Not there. Omer's been struggling here today from the outside. That ball deflected by Clareth as he tried to poke it away from Garner. And the shock will keep it. Well, Clareth looks a little bit more in tune there. He was poking at the ball and almost was able to pick the pocket. 7.45 to go in the first half. The number one team in the country, averaging 107 points per game, has yet to lead. Washington and Venice playing strong. Liriano gets a screen. Doesn't want the three. He is not an outside threat. He'll take the 18-footer down the left baseline. It's not there. 
And the rebound secured, and Liriano has it back. And the shot clock this year resets to 20 on an offensive rebound. Liriano cut off to Garner. Back to Liriano. Garner wants to post up Jones. Spins to the baseline. Good pass over to the right side. Davis drills a three. I'll tell you what, the big guy for the shock made a nice look, but he just displaces guys defensively with that body size of his. 26-20. Coward on the baseline is bumped on the way. I think they're going to get McAdoo. Yep, and we're going to shoot one in the bonus. McAdoo's first, and that is the team's seventh. It'll put LJ Coward at the line. He's just four for nine on the season from the line thus far. 6.57 to go in the first half. Georgetown just hasn't quite found the rhythm yet. Well, that, that's partly because of the, uh, the group in black. They've done a nice job of not letting Georgetown get their self in a position to really get in their, their, their style of game. Chris Coffey out for the first time. Posh Posh in for the first time tonight as the second free throw for Coward is way short. Kyron Jones got the offensive rebound. He's going back to the line again. You said it earlier, partner. He's just going to get those gritty type of rebounds, and he's going to earn himself a lot of trips to the line like he's going to be here now. The foul is on Davis, the team's eighth. Well, Jones two for four at the line tonight. That one is off the mark. He's not following through. He also has a little hitch hitch, at the the top. Needs just one smooth release, and... And he's just a redshirt freshman. That's going to come in time. And it's almost Once like again, he's wishing. Posh, posh, oh, wow, 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 wow. wow, wow, wow. No, no, no. No, 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 no. He had to defend. He had the, the shock player pushed right underneath the rim and went straight up to get the rebound. That's not over the back. I hate to tell our beloved official here tonight. That's He had him pushed right underneath the rim. No way the shot guy could have gotten the rebound. Under seven minutes to play. Five-point shock lead. Playing well on the road against the number one team in the country and the reigning national champions. Liriano, I said he wasn't an outside threat. He just drilled a three. Just his second made three of the season on two tries. And that's it's the an eight-point lead. lead. That's the biggest lead of the first half for Washington Adventist. Coward runs baseline, up off the glass, not there. Eventually tipped into the hands of Liriano and Adventist now can push this lead to double digits as we approach six minutes to go in the half. Crowd's got a little quiet right now. I think they're a little stunned at what they're seeing. Liriano cut off at the elbow, and Omer's going to get called for the foul, trying to poke it away. That's Omer's second and the team's fourth. Twenty seconds for Adventist on the inbound. Maynard ha- has it in to Davis. Davis, 18 footer, good again. It is a 10 point Washington Adventist lead. Well, that was just a shot under under pressure from Clareth. Right now, Adventist Jason is hitting some shots with pressure on them. So eventually, things hopefully will turn around for Tigers. This is where it has to pick up, though. The offensive execution has not been good thus far for Georgetown. Looks like it was Clareth a, straight away. Got hit. That is a three-pointer wow. for Nico Clareth, his 12th of the season. Yeah, he and, got hit on the shot and no call. Boy, did he need to see that go down tonight. It's his first basket, 12th three of the season, and Travel. now a travel is called on Jay Davis. So one thing you can also say, Venice has not done a whole lot. Has turned Turn it over, over right. and allowed Georgetown to get into transition. 520. Coach for Washington and Venice, pretty pleased with what he's seen from thus far. It's a long trip to make. Yeah, and I would from say the Maryland area. I would say more than pretty pleased. Coward on the left side has two shadowing. Clareth nearly dragged that pivot foot. He'll pivot into the lane instead. Banker no good. Boomba tried to tap it up. Clareth gets it back for Georgetown. Far pass out to Coward, now to Conway. Adventist recovering nicely defensively. Coward, floater not there. Boomba on the weak side. He is 
going up for it. They're going to say it's a jump ball. Wow. Georgetown will keep the possession Holy on the cow. arrow. I thought, I thought really. Boomba was hammered from yeah, behind. Yeah, I thought he got drilled, but I, I thought also LJ got cut up under as he went up for the shot. So just 11 to shoot for Georgetown. There's a hold. And yep. they're going to get Garner with the hold of Boomba. That will be Garner's second. He just put a bear hug on him. <laughs> yeah, the team's nice, so it'll put Hugo at the Hugo Boomba at the line for a one and one. Yeah, that's all he could do. He could, he couldn't. Boomba made a nice, quick first step, and he couldn't get over the top. Boomba, transfer from Southern Indiana. This will be his one and only season. In a Tiger uniform, he is a native of the Congo. The free throw rattles out, tapped up into the air and pulled down by Davis. Well, Georgetown right now struggling, shooting the ball from the foul line. Chris Coffey will check in at the next whistle. Liriano now to Raymond. Right side through the hands of Davis. Just recovers before the ball goes over the sideline. Crossover on Clareth. They'll step into a three that's off the mark. Boomba, good weak side rebound. That ball is out. Good effort to try and keep it in play by McAdoo, but Georgetown will take over. And other action, Georgetown women in a tight one with Faulkner in the Mid-South Southern States Athletic Challenge. Georgetown right now a little over halfway through the fourth, trailing by just a point to the Eagles. We'll keep an eye on that one as we go forward. Coward at the top of the key here. Wanted coffee in the back door loud. Now they've got a mismatch with Liriano. Back out to Coward. Liriano daring him to take it, and Coward drills it. That's big for LJ. His second three of the season on six tries. It's now six straight for the Tigers. Back to a four-point shock lead. Four minutes to go. Sewell over to Liriano. Now Ah, don't don't gamble. Raymond on the block. Coffee recovers after the gamble. And now the floater inside is good for McAdoo. Gambled and put George, the rest of his teammates, in scramble mode. You can't do that. 33-27 in favor of Washington Adventist. Coward on the left side, cut off, out to Chris Coffey. You're they'll not let, a guard. They'll let, <laughs> they'll let him shoot that all day. Coward, he'll try it. That one woefully oh, wow. short, barely drew the front iron. And, and nobody down there to rebound. Liriano will slow it down. One of the few times we've been able to slow the pace down here in this first half. 3.20 to go. Sewell That's straight a away. Screen. They gave him enough space, and he knocked down the three. I tell you what, though, that, that was a moving screen. The seventh three of the first half. The South with 3.40 to go. Georgetown up two now, 64-62. We'll keep an eye on that one as we go along as the ti- Lady Tigers look to bounce back from a tough loss last night to Bruton Parker. Coward. Over to Posh Posh, down the lane. That'll be an offensive foul all He's day long. He's in the long. circle. <laughs> but he was in the circle. He had his but right or his left heel on the circle. That's the second foul on Posh. But if Posh Posh stops at the t- at the foul line, he has Chris Coffey on the baseline for a dunk. Agreed. But but the shock defender had his left foot on the circle, and that's supposed to be a block that's automatically. That's two on Posh Posh. And Georgetown... So, again, that's where that rule comes into effect. you got an official that's trying to determine whether or not the defender's into a defensive uh, guarding position. Georgetown. And also looking at his feet. Also doesn't have the surfaces of Michael Ture tonight. He has been banged up all throughout training camp and thus far early in the season. Have not seen him today. Don't expect him to. He's not in uniform. To the far corner. Washington Adventist just drilled its eighth three of the first half. This one from Jay Davis. It is a 12-point shock lead. Very fitting their name is to what we're seeing here. Coward through the lane, bounce feet over to Posh Posh, and he gets called. A pushing foul is going to be called on Raymond, and I don't agree with that one. I thought Posh traveled before Raymond got there. Raymond backed into him with his rear end. That'll be Raymond's first and the team's tenth. He said, well, I didn't do anything. Well, unfortunately for him, when your backside is – Pronounced. <laughs> Bosch Bosch at the line. He leads the NAIA in field goal percentage early in the season. From the foul line, he's three for four now early in this 2019 2020 campaign. Tell you what, he's a, a good looking freshman. Soft touch. 
can handle the ball. That one too strong. Sewell has it for the shock. 39-28. Washington and Venice. Line. Washington and Venice has not trailed. Both teams 3-0 on the year. Trying to post up is Sewell on Coward. From the left side this time, the result's the same. Sewell with the fadeaway. He has 10. It's a 13-point Washington and Venice lead. I tell you what, they've hit some real tough shots, including that one from Sewell. Clareth on the right side. Trying to shit Coward away to clear the baseline out. He'll take a fall away. 18-footer is good. And then turns around to the bench and says something. And I think he just got a warning for it. Or maybe, no, it's, maybe a little bit of blood, got a on, the blood on his shoulder, on his, on his shirt. So they'll have to clean that up before yeah. he can before, uh, he can continue or perhaps the Georgetown will just go ahead and send a substitute in. But uh, they're saying it's blood. Well, he has to get that taken care of. I think they're just trying to determine if they can get it quickly cleaned up so he can stay in. But Georgetown looks like they'll send Kyron Jones into the game. I think they're trying to determine where it is or whose blood it is. I'm looking at Dan Volpe over there who's filling in tonight for the training staff over there. Dan, more notably, Scott County High School's trainer on duty. Washington and Venice leading with 95 seconds to go in the half. This is Raymond. Now left side, McAdoo trying to work the baseline on Posh Posh. Sewell. Now over to Davis. Davis on the drive. Scoop shot is good. Wow. Davis averages six points per game. He has ten here in the first half. It's back to a 13-point shock lead. Coward on the baseline. Inside to Jones. I don't know how he caught that, but he missed the... Reverse lay-in, trying to get it back. He does. Good hustle from Jones. And he'll reset the offense to L.J. Coward with one minute to play in the first half. I'll tell you what, there was a lot of contact on the drive from Jones. That, but give Jones credit for the, all the, the stick to it. This. Coward picks up the dribble to Jones at the top of the key. Left side, Jacob Conway. Shot clock down to one, and it'll be a shot clock violation. And see, there's a little tonic from Sewell. Chris Briggs t- talking to L.J. Coward. I think Coward may have forgot that the shot clock resets to 20 on an offensive rebound. Well, that's understandable because you're rewarding the offense. Sewell working against Posh Posh. Deep three. Rolled out. My goodness, what a, what a big one that would have been. Coward going to try and push the pace. The lob there. Coffee with the jam, but the foul called before the lob. And the foul will be against Liriano. That is his second. That's one of those is official. I think you let go. Pass is already gone and has absolutely nothing to do with the play. It'll put L.J. Coward at the line. He's one for two. Oh, wow. Minute and a half left down there. Uh, Faulkner and Georgetown tied at 69. And Coward badly misses the first free throw here. Left that one well short. The second one for L.J. is good. Give him now seven points. About a two-second differential, so Washington and Venice will likely wind this ball down. Forty-three, thirty-one, twenty seconds to play. Sewell backs it out deep against Conway. Shot clock down to ten. Nothing moving. Now here comes the screen from McAdoo. Sewell behind the back stops at the elbow. Tough shot, not there, and a baseline jumper is short, and that's how the first half will end. That's about the only thing that went wrong offensively for Washington. Begin with the original starters, save one change. Kyron Jones will start the second half for Georgetown in place of Hugo Boomba. Jones is strong, first half, 6.6 rebounds. The shock will have possession. I think it's just for the fact of an offensive punch. I'm going with the hot hand. Good backdoor cut there by Sewell, but Conway denied the shot opportunity. Back out to the top, and Liriano. Liriano, five points, couple of rebounds, couple of assists. Nearly had a third assist as the three was missed by Raymond. Coward, hands off to Omer. Jake Omer. Spin spin. down the lane, lane, good. 
That was a nice move. Maynard did all he could. There's just nothing you can do with that. Very patient. Georgetown spread the floor and let Omer work. Omer now with nine. Coward nearly had a steal from behind. Instead, it's going to get called for the foul. A little touchy. Try, trying to get it away from Liriano. It's Coward's first. They're going to call it a hack, but that was a little touchy foul. And I think you let a lot go in the first half on both ends defensively. I'd be curious to see, too, if Georgetown picks up their full court pressure in this second half. Saw it in droves in the season opener against Miami Middletown. We have not seen it at all here tonight. Liriano with the elbow over to Maynard. Wants his 4-3. That one way too long. Coffee with the rebound. And the foul called on the back side. Oh, they're wow. going to get Raymond. I thought they were going to get uh, Conway. Because he put both hands in the lower back. And I don't know who he pushed. I don't know if it was his teammate or a shock player. 43-33 a minute into the second half. Washington and Venice has never trailed. Coffee straight away. Oh, wow, he missed him. The Jones flashed on the back door. It wasn't there. Coward bounce feet over Conway. Cannot get it to go. His struggles continue. He's missed 11 of his last 12 shots dating back to the start of the Simmons College game. That's got something to do with that ankle because he doesn't have the, the actual squaring up and being able to shoot. On the elbow, now bouncing out a little bit. That was McAdoo. Now Maynard pulls up from the foul line. Jumper not there. Conway, good rebound. And unfortunate break there for the shock as Raymond's going to get called for the foul as he really just lost his balance. And Conway fell over the top of him. That'll be his third and the team's second. Dwayne Garner checks in. That's a tough call, but I, we see a lot of calls where you get tangled up, run down the floor, and they call a foul on one or the other. It's just... Garner. Unfortunately, the nature of the of the way things are called these days. Garner comes in now. Didn't score the first half. Thought he played rather well. It gave him a good physical presence on the block. Coward trying to drive the baseline. He's cut off by Garner. Jones wants a three. He's got a three. His first three as a Georgetown Tiger. Kyron Jones' strong night continues. And Georgetown with the first five of the second half. Well, the first two and a half minutes belong to the Tigers right now, but... The defensive pressure, not where it, I know Chris Briggs wants it. Sewell, oh, wow. Sewell, tough shot. Conway will get called with the touch Ooh. foul. His first and the team's second. That's where you reward a, 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 an offensive player for a step in and a fall away. That was a very James Harden-esque. Yeah, that was very – if there was contact, there was very little. So Sewell goes to the line, 73%. Said he bodied him up. Wow. He yep. led the team in scoring with 16 in yep. the win over Howard University. LJ, throw was good. LJ asked the official to call the foul. What did he do? And the official said he bodied him. I thought Sewell was the one that created that contact and step back. But The second for the senior from Germantown, Maryland. That's a real good area, a hotbed of high school basketball, Germantown. Yeah, good talent. A lot and, of talent. And, and Sewell's one of them. He First two points of the half, he has a dozen. Nine-point shock lead. Coward double teamed out to Jones. Conway, they're moving it around, but it, Venice is there at every turn. Coward working on Liriano, back to Omer, straight away three, left it short the whole way and knew it. Rebound pulled down by McAdoo. Now Georgetown right now not getting the customary offensive rebounds they are accustomed to. Uh, no dribble penetration right now. Yeah. Coffee's not very active either. Yeah, Coffee's been quiet outside of those two dunks early in the game. Chris Coffey's been rather quiet. Liriano pulls up, 18-footer. No good, but that's a pretty-looking stroke from Freddie Liriano. Omer in transition. He likes to do this. He'll go coast-to-coast coast and lay it in. Got hammered right afterwards, too, but able to finish. He's the first Tiger into double figures now with 11. It's back to a seven-point Washington at Venice lead. Liriano very patient. They've done a switch defensively, Georgetown has. They've got Conway on Sewell starting out this half, and Con uh, Coward on Move Lariano. Moving screen called on Garner as he put the hip into the Tiger. That's Garner's third and the team's third. And that's on that's on Lariano. That's on the point guard for the shock. You have to wait. If you know a screen's coming, you have to wait for your big to get set and rub shoulders with him. You cannot go out like that and make him chase your man. 
Derek Hopkins in to the game now. Had a cameo appearance in the first half. Picked up two fouls rather quickly. Coward on the drive. Working on Liriano. No good. Put back attempt is good. And now Washington and Venice uses a timeout. I think a good timeout here yeah, they, they for Venice. A, they made a nice one this game. And now Gilkerson comes in to handle the point as Liriano takes a seat. This is about the time they took Liriano out the last in the first half, and they actually Hopkins kept a pivot foot down and an offensive foul down low. Jacob Conway draws it, and Hopkins just can't seem to stay out of foul trouble. That is his third for a guy that averages 11 points per game, which well, is second best on the team. I think Jacob got by with a little deal. He was already falling before Hopkins got there. 45-40. It takes, a, it takes a, some intestinal fortitude to sit there and take, a, take one right in the chops. Coward being checked by Hopkins. As I was going to say, go ahead and drive it. Coffee down the lane, Euro step, and he just threw the fourth on, on Hopkins. Hopkins. So the shot getting in some foul trouble now. That is four on Derek Hopkins, and much like the first half, he picks up two fouls in a hurry upon entering the game. Yeah, and you know that's and Murphy has three. I mean, they're two two of their bigs have three, and he's got four now. And Garner with three, Raymond with three. Chris Coffey's free throw is no good. Use your legs, Christopher. Georgetown now 8 of 18 at the foul line. Use your legs. And Hopkins now goes out. Ethan Murphy takes his place. Chris Coffey, the second. Still didn't use his legs. Gets it to go, though. Chris yeah. was six. 45 41. 10 2 Georgetown to start the second half. 15 45 remaining. What? LJ picked up the. This is Gilkerson. He has a size advantage, doesn't want to use it. Maynard around the screen, hit three threes in the first half. All alone underneath is Murphy. Georgetown can't recover. Good pass from Maynard to Murphy for Ethan Murphy's first basket. Well, Coffey didn't leave his feet to try to block the shot. Coward working on Gilkerson, no look feed. Coffey throws it down. And then got undercut. Coffey with eight, LJ Coward with the assist. And that and was a LJ's, pretty one. LJ's fourth assist. Gilkerson on the right side, cut off by Coward. Now to McAdoo. Sewell negotiating. Good pass to the corner. Gilkerson three, way too strong. Omer has the board. Georgetown's pushing. Omer trying to go through everybody. Over to Jones, rejected by Sewell. Terrific play in transition. The other way, Murphy down low, bowls over LJ Coward. And how many times do you say it? LJ Coward draws the offensive foul. That is Murphy's third. He took a good pop. But you see the difference between when Conway stood there to take a charge and Conway, or in, and Cowherd. Cowherd took the full brunt of it. And that's already 16 fouls on Adventist here in the second half. From this point on, Georgetown will shoot the bonus. And, of course, when they get to 10, we'll shoot the double bonus. And there's still 14.47 to go. Jay Davis into the game now for Gilkerson. Jones only a red shirt freshman. He'll learn. Sewell at 6'4", got a really nice body. Jane, uh, timed that just right, but you got to go up with two hands and dunk it over the smaller guard. Omer at the top. Now Coward being that checked by the taller Davis. Ooh. Coward gets a couple of screens. Coffee was open down low. They can't get it to him. And now deflected, and now on the floor, that Kyron Jones comes away with it to LJ Coward. Into the corner, Jones shuffles it over. Omer, three ball, not there. If Georgetown had scored on that, that would have been a lucky possession because that ball was in advantage hands three times. Nico Clareth into the game, now wearing 24 for Georgetown because of the blood on the jersey. Sewell around a screen, hits the three. You can't go underneath he's, on a screen. He's too good of a shooter. Yep. He, Sewell has 15. you got to fight over the top on him. That's the ninth three. The Washington Adventist has hit tonight on 20 tries. Jake Homer on the right side. Maynard checks him. Now to Coward. Coffey posting up on the smaller defender, and a foul is going to be called on Davis for violating the cylinder. That is Davis' second, and Chris Coffey is going to be at the line for one and a bonus. Georgetown shooting free throws the rest of the way. Yeah, but if you don't hit them, it doesn't do you any good to get there. 
The and Tigers are just 9 for 19 at the foul line tonight. Looked like the blood that they found on the jersey of Claris in the first half is actually on his left bicep inside of it. Coffee's free throw is good. Better form that time from Chris. He now has nine points to go along with five rebounds. He's trying to look for somebody to give him five, and nobody gave him five till Clareth came in and whacked him on the backside. <laughs> the second for the senior. Off the left, Jones battling, tipped it in. Kyron Jones just doesn't take the foot off the gas. He has 11. It's a four-point Washington at Venice lead. Well, you need guys like that on your roster. Jay Davis, tough three, nearly went down. Weak side, Maynard couldn't get it to go. Jones with a rebound. He is having a fabulous night. Omer into the front court. Lob, Coffee with a throwdown. Oh, wow. Timeout on the floor. Yeah. So if you're going to give me a freebie, I'll take it. Well, I, I think he was just, he may have made a comment and, the official Brooks thought maybe that was what he was talking about. 17 to 7 in favor of Georgetown here in the half. It's down to a two point Washington to Venice lead. Sewell at the elbow gives it to Davis. Good defense by Cower to force him to give it up. Maynard challenged by Omer with the right hand. Pull up from the elbow is short. Sewell gets the rebound and will throw it up and draw the foul on Claire. A smart play by Sewell. That's two big bodies, it's bang, two big guards banging with each other. and. Sewell got the beneficiary of a, of a really fortuitous bounce. Nico's first, team's third. And Sewell at the line. Just been steady Eddie all night, has Xavier Sewell. He's now three for three at the line, and he has a game high 16 points. Well, he's been here before. He's been in this gym. He knows how this gym, even with a crowd that's, a relatively good crowd, but not a huge crowd, can get. The second for Sewell That's is good. also that good. That is a good-looking release. Stops a big run from Georgetown. Back to a four-point lead. Coward. Uh, coffee in back. Going to set to get Clareth free on a look. 17-footer, Pure. Tell you what, the last time Adventist came in here, wasn't it a three-point game? And they missed a three at the buzzer to tie it? I think so. This is why I said at the top of the broadcast, this has become a fun little rivalry yes, it has. between these two schools that are nowhere near each other geographically. Davis wants to answer with a three. Not there. Coffee with the rebound. Georgetown can tie or come for the lead for the first time. Clara, three for the lead. Bullseye! The first lead of the night for Georgetown comes with 12 minutes to go from the senior, Nico Clareth. And that was a line drive shot, had no arts whatsoever. And now you hear the crowd is into it here at Davis Reed Alumni Gym. A great crowd it has been tonight. Sewell, double team for the moment, now gives room. I look across to President Baker, he's into it too. J Maynard doing a lot of dribbling, shot clock down to five, pass to nobody. Kyron Jones with the steal. Coward into the front court. Got the coffee. Lob. Washington and Venice may need a timeout. Holy ba cow. Ball gets hung up in the rim. It'll stretch into the media timeout, and this crowd is on fire. Chris Coffey, I saw that one coming from midcourt. LJ saw him, and folks, he delivered a dime. Communicating who was in, who was out. But now Georgetown, a little bit of pressure. Now they're going to back it off and go to the half court. But here's where it's picked up here. They've actually turned the intensity up a little bit higher on the defensive end. Garner steps out on the wing. Jones checks in. He wants to drive on Jones. Bumped along the way. Nice drive there from Garner. I think he may have caught Jones off guard there a little bit with the quickness. Jones picks up his first foul in well, the team's fourth. If you're Jones, you have to understand by sitting over there for the first few minutes of the game and the second half. The guy you're guarding is a lefty. He has shown no desire whatsoever to go to his right hand. Sit on that left. Make him go right. Garner's first free throw attempt of the night is good for a really his first Really nice point. look. Now they got Lariano back in. 
I really like this Freddie Liriano. 5'8", just a sophomore, so you know he's got a lot of room to grow on the court as far as IQ goes and ball and yeah. operation of the offense, but he looks very composed here in his first foray. And sitting here looking at him in the face, he looks like a sophomore in high school, not a sophomore in college. 55-54, Georgetown in front. Looks very, very young. Coward. Gets it from the screen. Now they're going to set another screen. Here comes Clareth. Contested shot and bounces in. Is what? it going to be that kind of second half for Nico Clareth? His third three of the night, his 14th of the season. It's a four-point Georgetown lead. That's what you call a shooter's bounce. <laughs> Raymond, baseline jumper, is an air ball and a foul going to be called. They're going to say, they're going to say, I think Coffee caught him wow. in the chops. Coffee's second, the team's fifth. Said Chris hit him in the face and said, yeah, Chris tell him, hey, I had my hand in his face, and he threw his head back. So Raymond at the line. Now, you don't see Chris talk to the official very much. He just kind of plays. <laughs> now, he talks to everybody else, but he won't talk to an oh, official. He'll, he'll talk to an official, which just won't necessarily have anything to do with the game. <laughs> Probably not. Probably talking about rap music and the official looking at him going, Who? <laughs> What band are you talking about? Good looking stroke from Ishmael, Ishmael Raymond to drop two. Back uh, to a two point Tiger lead. That was a free two for, for the shock. That was a, a ill advised ill advised shot, and Georgetown was headed the other direction. Coward to the corner Ooh. and good pass over. Clareth working his way down the lane. He's fouled up on the shot, and, and they will say, I believe they're going to call that in the act of shooting. Sewell's going to get called for the foul. Boy, I. I got to tell you, partner, that to me looked like a foul on the floor. I did, too. The continuation. So to put Nico Clareth at the foul line, his see, first he, foray there tonight. He changed numbers because of the blood on the jersey, but here's the thing. His body language has changed from first half to the second half. He looks a little bit more uh, peppy. Much more energetic. Yeah. He's eight for nine. Better word than peppy. Thank you. On the season. Free throw <laughs> is good. <clears throat> I had a had a, a thesaurus meltdown there for a second. The second for Clareth is perfect. He has 15 to lead everybody for Georgetown. 60 to 56, 10:30 remaining. What's he got? 10 in the second half. You got it. Jay Davis. He's been quiet thus far in the second half. Going to pull nice up over challenge. Coward. Good, good shot. Good contest. Yeah, I said that's just a shot that. LJ challenged, probably like probably letting him a little too deep. That's six foot four over six foot, just enough difference. Coward down the lane, spin and in. Coward with eleven, he needs three to reach one thousand for his career. How many assists does he have tonight? He's credited with eight assists thus far, so on his way to another double double. Sewell's three is good as Coward was late to rotate over. He now has twenty, and Washington and Venice will take a timeout. Kyron Jones will inbound to Cl Coward and Adventist with some backcourt pressure, but Clareth easily breaks it in the front court to Omer. Clareth contested three, way off the mark. Went not, left. not a good shot. Liriano one on four. He'll wait for help. But he was feeling it, and that one he just kind of faded off to the left, and the ball went left. Liriano couldn't get it down on the block to Raymond. He'll work it back to the top to Davis. Now Raymond on the right wing. Shuffles it off to Liriano. Shot clock down to 10. Liriano with the elbow out to Garner. He'll try a three. It is good again, and the lead again for Washington at Venice. Their 11th three. Well, I don't know who. I think it was Jones that lost his man and left him open. That's a foul. Davis will get called for the foul. That is his third and the team's ninth. It'll That's put L.J. Coward at the line for a one plus a bonus. L.J.'s two for four at the line tonight. Now the next next foul for the shock will put Georgetown in the double bonus. Georgetown still two fouls away from even putting the shock in the one plus one. Free throw rattles home for the Bardstown senior. That was uh, an apropos term there. Ties it at 64. Correct. One more coming here. Will tie it at 64. There it is. There we go. 13 now for K. 
Cower. Nine minutes remaining. We are deadlocked at 64 here at Davis Reed Alumni Gym. Liriano cut off at the foul line over to Garner. He wants another three. That one well short into the hands of Nico Clareth. Clareth running the floor. No numbers. Clareth doesn't matter. Clareth has 12 and a half, 17 overall. The lead back to Georgetown. Tell you what, Georgetown pushed the pace there. If I'm LJ, I back off Lariano, let him shoot three. He's, he's not even looking to, to shoot it from three. Davis, he'll take a three over the top of the homer and drill it. Jay Davis with 15. And at Venice back in front. Came in averaging what? Came six. in averaging six a night. Has 15. It's amazing how somebody that's not very good score. Clareth. Missed it. Not there. Jones, strong offensive rebound. And that now gives Kyron Jones a double-double. And Coward trying to split through too many men, loses it out of bounds. Yeah, it's Georgetown's Larry, sixth turnover. I thought Larry Arnold got by with a swipe across the wrist of LJ, but it kept continuing on and off the knee of LJ. 11 points, 10 rebounds for Kyron Jones tonight. 10 rebounds, you said? 67-66, Washington but. and Venice with the lead. Liriano nearly expanded it out. Clareth with another rebound, his third. Got Coffey. Left side, Chris Coffey. Euro step in the lane, an offensive foul. Oh, wow. As he took a step towards the baseline. Oh, wow. That's Coffey's third, yeah, team I, six. I, I don't agree with that call. I, I think he's a really good official, but I tell you what. Coffey made that step towards the baseline, and the, and the shot guy, uh, Raymond, moved with him, and it kind of hooked him with that right arm. 7.45 remaining. Georgetown has pretty much ridden this five on the floor for this second half. We have yet to see Posh Posh here in the second half. Or Jacob, Conway, for that matter. Conway has just not had it tonight. His ankle Perhaps that right ankle be still bothering him. Doesn't look like he has the lift that he's had in the past. But I, th I think with the way Kyron Jones has been playing, he's just been playing so well. I agree. You want to leave him on the floor. You, now, you don't want to run a tank of gas low. You want to get him out and get him That's, a quick blow and yeah, get him back yeah. in. Nothing nothing against Hugo Boomba. It's just Jones has played so well, you got to leave him on the floor. Right. Garner down low. Jones walls him up. And a foul is going to be called there. And they're going to get L.J. Coward with the yep. hold. That is L.J.'s second and the team's seventh. Well, he was dropped down. He came down across. Is that, it? that is the team seventh? That's right because of the charge down here. Uh, yeah, again, you know, the, the toughest call in basketball is the block charge. Garner's two for two with the line. Rattles out. Clareth with a rebound. Georgetown, no harm done. 7.25 to go. Clareth straight away. Off the mark. Rebound pulled down by Davis. Another rush three from Nico Clareth. Omer was the only Tiger underneath to try and grab the rebound. Davis. Out of control. Dribbled himself into the corner, but gets it out to Liriano. And now Raymond. They move it around. Sewell. No good, but he is fouled that by Chris Coffey. That was a flop. He'll shoot three, and that is Chris Coffey's fourth foul. That was a flop. Sewell saw Coffey running at him, and just as he went up for the shot, he had already decided he was going to hit the floor. And he hit the floor, and he. Sewell is perfect at the line tonight, four yep. for four. He has a game high 20. I've seen, I've seen better flops on the soccer field. I saw that one coming in the official bit. Hugo Bumbo will have to come in now after the second free throw from Sewell. And it is good. He now has 21. It's been a pretty good officiated ball game, but you cannot let an offensive guy sell you something like that. And that was that was coming. Sewell had already decided he, he couldn't see the rim. The second of three for Xavier Sewell rattles out. First miss of the night. And Boomba indeed does come in now for Coffey. He's and been what, over there a long time. They're going to need him to provide some big minutes now with Chris Coffey on the bench. At least give him three or four minutes here on the bench. But Boomba, Boomba's got to do one, one of the things. He's got to play defense and rebound. Whatever he gets offense, that's okay. Sewell hits two of three. Now it's 22. Three-point shock lead with 7.05 remaining 
at Davis Reed Alumni Gym. Well, we knew Adventist was not going to go away when Georgetown went up five. Jones sets a screen for Clareth that kicks it over to Jones. Wide open. Too strong. Not there. Boomba, good weak side rebound. Boomba slapped away by Sewell, and Davis has it for the shock. Spinning into the lane, trying to go up for the shot, and well, Sewell with perfect timing. Yeah, Sewell with a nice pick, but I thought Boomba got fouled on the rebound. So Georgetown now has got to turn up the pressure down here. Garner trying to post up Jones. They can't get it into him. Sewell defended by Clareth. Who he walked. The pick up there. Who he walked. And the crowd here trying to voice that as well. Long two from Liriano. Not there. Omer, nice rebound. And Omer wants to push. Omer through everybody, and he'll go to the line. You just can't teach the kind of speed that Jake Omer has in the open floor. Well, he's under control. And that gives you two guards that are strong enough to get in the lane. That is on Raymond. That is his fourth in the team's tenth. So Raymond and Derek Hopkins with four. Jay Davis and Ethan Murphy with three. And also Dwayne Garner with three fouls. On the other side for Georgetown, Chris Coffey with four. Nobody else more than two as Omer's free throw is good. Give him 12 on the night. <coughs> Tyreek McAdoo into the game. Raymond will head out. Raymond looks like he's got a little bit of a limp as he walks off. Well, he took, he's the one that took the charge, or what was called a charge on Chris Coffey, and they hit his lower back on the floor. Omer's second is good. Give him 13. And now Elijah Maynard comes in for Washington at Venice in place of Freddie Liriano. 69-68, Washington to Venice with the lead, 6-14 to play. As the shock continue to look for the road upset. And Maynard pulled up at the elbow, gives way to Davis. Davis working against Coward, right over the top, three is not there. Clareth has the rebound, four on two in the front court. Left side, Omer doesn't want the three. Down the lane, floater, good for the lead. Good idea from Omer. His shot's been off from behind the arc, so what do you do? You got the shot backpedaling, put it on the floor and get to the paint. Omer has 15, the lead back to Georgetown. Garner on the left wing, working against Sit Jones. On left hand. Coward poked it away. Garner got it back. Garner backing his way down. Shot way too strong. Excellent defense from Kyron Jones. Omer, the left side. Clara, spot up three. Splash down. Whole lot like Millinghouse, isn't he, with a little flair to him? That's the Georgetown offense we're used to seeing. Clareth now with 20. 73, you gotta, 69. You got to get the ball out of Sewell's hands. Do not give him an open look. Here he is with it, working against Clareth. He'll take the three and hit it. Clareth in his face. Sewell has 25. But he can't catch the ball. Don't let him catch it. 4.50 to go, one-point Tiger lead. You can challenge yeah. all day long, but don't let him catch it. That's the easiest way to keep him scoring. Coward gets a screen Ooh, for the Over to Clareth, fakes a shot. He'll take a step back three and left it well short. And Clareth a little gimpy down underneath, though. Jones keeps the ball alive. So is Boomba. He got an elbow. Looks like he hit an elbow with somebody on his elbow. And the foul is on McAdoo. Clareth is, Clareth is cramping up. Kyron Jones will go to the foul line after the timeout. He has 11 points in the game and also 10 rebounds. He'll look for more on the other side of the break. 4.35 remaining. A good finish coming. Georgetown leads Washington. And I think this youngster at the foul line is a big reason why Georgetown's been able to stay in this game in the second half with Washington Invest. Kyron Jones has been spectacular tonight. He has played extremely well. His best game in a Georgetown uniform thus far. He has 12 points now and 11 rebounds. Got a blocked shot, too. I don't know if they credit him for one, but he got it. Free throw not there this time. Garner with the board. Well, if Georgetown winds up losing this game in a tight one, it'll be two things, the defensive of the three and lack of free throw shooting. The Tigers 17 of 29 at the foul line. Here's Sewell. He's had the hot hand. Now gives away to Garner. Sewell being checked by Coward. We'll see if they look back to Sewell. Davis down the lane. Finger roll not there. Deflected around, and finally Omer comes to get it. Jake Omer. But Jones got a push. hand on it. Crossover down the lane with the left hand. No good. But a foul is called late. It will be on Garner. That will be his fourth. And that came from the outside official, too. And I think he saw Omer go flying. And 
Georgetown starting to pull away on the yeah. rebounding edge, too. The Tigers plus 11 tonight. 14 offensive rebounds, and yet only six second-chance points. Yeah. And, partner, I'll, I'll, I'll agree with, with Washington Venice. I don't think that was really a foul. I think Omer took himself out of position to shoot the ball in a good, in a good position. Omer now 5 for 5 from the line tonight. He has 16. As Garner heads out, Hopkins heads in. Derek Hopkins has been riddled with foul trouble tonight. I don't think he's played more than five minutes. No, he got two within a span of 30 seconds. In both halves. Omer's second is good. Give him 17. Four-point lead for the Georgetown again with four minutes to go. Omer's been a quiet 17, really, to be honest with you. Sewell with it. He has had the hot hand. He's got a height advantage. Won't lift up over Coward this time. Now Maynard. Hit three threes in the first half. Has been quiet ever since. That shot, not even close. Jones with another board. Omer off and running. Three on five. Omer out of control. Going to call a walk. It was either going to be a walk or an offensive foul. Well. Omer's been doing that quite often tonight, and this time he got caught. Well, that time, Adventist did a nice job of sprinting back to the paint and, and clogging the lane. Omer has to recognize that sooner. Liriano back in. Maynard out. Yeah, the, the offense has become stagnant. Liriano hesitation, stops the elbow. May got away with dragging the pivot foot. Yep. Now Hopkins does get called for the travel. I don't think he walked. I think he gave a little quick step with the right foot with a jab, and the official calling for steps. Twelfth at Venice turnover. And give them credit, too. They Coming in tonight, they've been averaging 20 turnovers per game. They've done an excellent job taking care of the ball. Yeah, they have. This is the biggest Tiger lead of the night. No, I had five a moment ago, 45-40, right? Or no, 45-50. That's what it was. Jones straight away, wanting to drive down low. No, Smart idea there. Need it. Hopkins was had his fourth foul. Hugo Boomba cleans up the garbage. Well, that was just who wants the basketball. Boomba picked it up and said, I do. His first basket gives, gives Georgetown its biggest lead, Liriano. Three is not close. Jones, another board. Not a good shot from the youngster. That is the 13th rebound for Kyron Jones. Chris Briggs wants to run it. LJ Cowherd said, Coach, we're up six with three to go. I got control of the tempo. Boomba sets a screen for Coward into the corner. Omer got Big a one. look. Big one. <laughs> Omer with 20, and Washington at Venice needs a timeout. It is all of a sudden a nine-point. That's hard to do. Partner. That is very hard to do, and they've done a stellar job at that. Of course, they make us look really good with not putting this on camera. <laughs> we'll let that one go. <laughs> but you know I'm right. Sewell, here he is demanding the ball, but good doesn't want the LJ. shot. Hopkins nearly walked again. Davis wants a three. That's a big one for the Nothing shot. You do about it. That was just a good offense. Davis has 18 on his fourth made three of the night. Well, he's shooting with confidence, and that, that takes a lot to help you. Boom, but good screen into the corner. Jones doesn't want the shot there. Hopkins almost daring him to shoot it. This is Jones' game. Spin move not there. Boomba trying for the putback. It's not there, and a foul is going to be called against oh, wow. Raymond, I believe. And if it is, he's gone, and it is. Yep. Tough call there to go against Ishmael Raymond. But four guys just going for the ball, and he just happened to come out on the wrong side of it. He will foul out with just five points. Well, I tell you what, Boomba almost had a spectacular finish on I the follow. You, Boomba's played an outstanding six minutes since coming yeah. in for Chris Coffey. And Chris is up here looking, hey, Coach, I'm down here, remember? I'm still. The way Boomba's played on both ends on the glass. <laughs> well, he might be a better free throw shooter, too, yeah, than yeah. Coffey. You haven't had to ask him to come in there. Almost jinxed him, partner. How about, how about the home court bounce there yeah, for that hit right, hit right on the back heel of the rim and bounced straight up in the air. And then Coffey comes in with a minute 58 to go. Boomba hits his free throw. Oof. Boomba missed the free throw badly that time. Yeah. And maybe just so he can stay into the game. Uh, no, I don't think so. That, that didn't look good <laughs> off his hand from the get-go. No, it did not. Sewell at the elbow. Not there. Rebound. Jones taps it to himself. He has been a man among boys on the glass tonight. That is his 14th rebound. Tell you what, he won't get you with the, the, the wow factor. He reminds me kind of Edson in the Vila. Just gets the job done. And he looks absolutely gassed right now on the floor. Here he is with the ball. 
Coward takes it back with 15 to shoot, 90 seconds remaining. He says, remaining I'll set a game. couple of screens here and go down on the block, and maybe I'll get a little respite down here. Georgetown working a little Six clock. To shoot. Down to five. Coward splits two. Now to the corner. Omer with a three. Bingo! <laughs> wow. Falling off the baseline, Jake Omer hits the three. Ten point Georgetown lead. On the other side, Garner three in the foul as Boomba came crashing in. Oh, and then he and shoots the arrow at the baseball team in the crowd. Uh, young man, you're down seven with a minute four to go. <laughs> uh, you have to and learn he, he not got, to do that. He got the scoreboard chant from the baseball yeah. team. Boomba tried to avoid the foul, and what happened was he actually was holding on to the shock player, and all of a sudden he just said, well, I'm going to just fall down and got the call. That's the 15th three tonight for Washington at Venice. 15. Well, they, they hadn't shot the ball that well all year long. Of course, it's only two, two or three games in, but as you like to say, a sample size. Garner got the rebound, but it was too far underneath the rim, and the baseball team will let him hear it. Yeah, One minute remaining. You don't make the, the, the archer, the bow and arrow sign, and then come back and do a play like that. You wonder when does Adventist begin to stretch the game out. It looks like they're going to play it out here, down seven. Coffey gets it back to Omer. Yeah. And now Jake Omer with ten. And That's a, touch, a touchy, yeah. A touch foul called on Gilkerson. It's his first. But it puts one of Georgetown's best free throw shooters at the line to shoot two. Jake Omer with a Georgetown, high, Georgetown career high 23 tonight. Did have 25 against Kentucky, but that's an exhibition, so it doesn't go into the record books. Yeah, but still gives him bragging rights. 24 <laughs> now for the junior from Taylor don't, Mill, and Kentucky. Don't you think him being a Kentucky boy, didn't he ain't talking smack back home. Saying, hey, I got 25 against the best program in the country. Just been steady and consistent tonight, has Jake Omer. Oh, by the way, LJ Coward, another double-double. He yep. has 10 assists. The second free throw, oh. Omer, no good that time. Sewell with the board, 40 oh, seconds Oh, you got to go. get back. Hopkins, Omer, nice job to flash through and knock it away. Yeah, but, boy, we almost got burned because we didn't get back. <laughs> Last thing you need to do is give up an easy two like that. 35.8 on the clock, and Venice will have to go quickly. And Venice is out of timeouts too, aren't they? Oh, Sewell. boy, he just. Floater, not there. Conway trying to tap it up, and a foul is going to be called. And Kyron Jones and Chris gets, I believe, is going to get called for the foul. Chris Briggs with his hands in the air doesn't agree. It's Jones, just Jones is second, but it is the team's tenth. Maynard will shoot two. And it does stop the clock with less than 31 to play. Maynard had those three threes in the first half as Washington had been stretched out its lead, but has been dead silent until now. He now has 10. Garner out, McAdoo in. This is a defensive switch here. Georgetown going to burn a timeout here. 86-79 with 30.8 on the clock here. Elijah Maynard out of the timeout will shoot one more free throw. He is just a blue-collar style of player. He's the type that's going to make himself a fan favorite over time. Maynard hits the second. Now to a six-point lead. And... Shaheem Gilkerson checks in, and now it'll be Georgetown's ability to not only get the ball in first, but hit free throws to try and close this thing out. Coward oh. trapped in the corner, trying to find his way out up the baseline, and does. Omer into the middle, lob, and that was deflected by Hopkins, but Conway gets it back, and Adventist will have to draw the foul. Yeah, Chris Briggs saying, it's okay, I'll take it, because you had a guy open. Unfortunately, a shock player got a hand in there on the lob from Omer. Yeah. To yeah, nice play. Coffee. I didn't know who the player was. Did you that, see? That was Hopkins, Hopkins. who got, got the fingertip on the lob. And before Conway can shoot two free throws, Washington and Venice moving games back to before the new year, as it was a few years ago when there were more teams in the league. Jacob Conway at the foul line hits the free throw. That's that good. is Conway's first point of the night. He said he was going to have a big game, so maybe two free throws here will be the part that are well, the big part, huh? It makes it a three possession game for Conway as the second it. one. Oh, Out boy, Coffey got drilled. Sewell grabs it, and he'll push the pace. <clears throat> 15 seconds to play. Sewell scooped to the hoop, lays it in. He has 27. 
And Adventist calls a timeout, and Chris Briggs not happy with that at all, defensive transition at all. No. And nor should he be. That was. Take the chance of it being an intentional, though. Davis will face guard Coward. Conway gets it into him anyway. And Coward is fouled. Took three seconds, a little less than three seconds off the clock. Davis gets called for his fifth, and he will. Become the second the shock, yeah. A really good night for Jay Davis, though. 18 yeah. points, four made threes. It cost himself very, very well. And L.J. Coward will go to the line. Kyron Martin checks in for the first time for Washington Vets, wearing 32. Now, he looks a whole, whole lot more like Rip Hamilton except for the hair. <laughs> the hairstyle's a little bit. Coward at the line, 4-2. Oh, it's too strong. 11.9 on the clock, a five-point Tiger lead. Now, if you're Georgetown, you got to deny a three. You got to make them step inside the arc. And do not foul the a second three. Second one shooter. is good. That is point number 1,000 for LJ Coward. His 14th of the night. Six-point lead. Ten seconds to go. Gilkerson, no, no, little no. out of control and nearly threw that it helps. away. Maynard's going to have to rush into a three off the front iron. Coffee taps it out to himself, and that's going to do it. Wow. What, what a ball game here tonight. Chris Brace and Patrick Crary.